Let me read to you a passage from the fourth chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 43 to 54. It's the Gospel for Monday of the fourth week of Lent. St. John writes, After two days, Jesus left for Galilee. Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honour in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, You may go, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, The fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realised that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and all his household believed. This was the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed, having come from Judea to Galilee. That's from John chapter 4, verse 43 to 54. We think of the will to believe. What do I mean? Well, one of the burning and most intractable of philosophical questions over the last century or two has been that of certitude, which is to say the possibility of being certain about something. This is an especially acute matter for religious faith because one can scarcely believe properly in God and Christ if one is not certain about him. In 1847, John Henry Newman, famous Anglican convert and now an ordained Catholic priest, was still in Rome after studies there, preparing to be an oratorian. During these months, he wrote his first novel. It was published anonymously early the following year, its title being Loss and Gain. It is the story of a young Oxford student and graduate whose path to Catholicism is chronicled. Late in the novel, the hero, Charles Reading, meets a Catholic priest on the train. In their conversation, the priest emphasises the fundamental importance of the decision of the will, aided by grace, for assent to the Catholic faith. Charles says to the priest that there is a great temptation operating on many well-informed and excellent men to find fault with the evidence for Catholicity. They then give over the search on the excuse that there were arguments on both sides. The fact that there are arguments on both sides, that there are some grounds for an opposite opinion, and that there is something of a venture involved in the ascent of faith, becomes the motive for refusing to assent. How can real certainty ever be attained when reason is confronted by conflicting probabilities or arguments? People expect that their reason must be subdued by evidence in order to assent to something. This, answered the priest, is the grievous deficiency in Englishmen altogether. Englishmen have many gifts, Faith they have not, and when they shall recognise this defect in themselves and try to remedy it, then they will recognise much more. They will be on the road very shortly to be Catholics. He then said quietly, What is to make one believe? The will. His will. If belief does not then follow, the fault lies with the will. So then, 
Absolute certainty, which is a factor of true faith, is the fruit of an act of the will, sustained by grace. Such a conversation in that novel reminds us of the matter of faith. More precisely, it reminds us of the will to believe. If I lack the will to believe in Christ and his church, reasons to believe will help, but they alone will not give me this will. If I am to believe, I must exercise personal choice. What do I mean here? Well, when I was a child and in my early youth, I had a real interest in art, drawing and painting. I was judged to be very good at it. But because of various other circumstances, requirements and activities, I neglected it and it passed out of my life. I have not engaged in art since my boyhood, basically because I have lost interest in it. However, at various points I have seen good reasons to take it up again. The reasons are there, but what was needed was an act of the will. I had to make a decision to act on some of those reasons and re-enter that sphere of activity. I'm sure it would be a good thing were I to do this. While I am not now interested, the basic thing is that I have not made a decision to revive my interest in engaging in art. I have too many other things that I am committed to, and these are the object of my choice. All I'm saying here is that recognising good reasons for assenting to some course of action is not sufficient for the doing of it. There must be a decision, an act of the will. There is something more. That act of the will, that decision, is not likely to be made if there is not in place certain features of character, which is to say a disposition to do so. There is a certain interaction between the decision of the will and disposition of character, such that disposition prepares the way for certain choices. Particular decisions mould the character's dispositions. Now these observations are meant only to illustrate the importance of the will, the importance of personal decision in the act of religious faith. It is faith that our Lord is requiring in the Gospel of today that I read earlier. If I am to believe in Jesus Christ, it is not enough to recognise good reasons for believing in Christ. I must make a decision on the matter and act. And for this I need the help of God's grace, because, because of weakness of will and very faulty dispositions. Decisions to believe will form the character, and character thus formed will support the decisions. In our Gospel that I read earlier from John chapter 4, verse 43 to 54, the royal official asks our Lord to come and heal his son who was close to death. Our Lord pressed him on his faith. He wanted a profession of it, one that was not simply the result of seeing signs and wonders. He wanted a decision to believe. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. Our Lord received that profession of faith. Sir, come down before my child dies. With that, Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. Let us remember that faith in God and Christ requires a decision aided by grace. Let us make that decision, renew it daily, and live in a manner consistent with it, always asking for the gift of grace.